Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcast. This just popped in my head. If you, if you, if you, if he squawks like a duck and he walks like a duck, uh, but he has creaky dulcet tones, uh, he's probably just a sleep podcaster that, uh, that squawks and walks and waddles, uh. But hopefully this podcast will be your auditory swaddle because it's time for sleep with me. The pod, if you're confused, you're in the right place. It's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do this for you for free tw- twice a week. If your hand hits that fridge tomorrow, think uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thanks. All right, everybody. We're talking season three, episode 11, Utopia. And this is an episode I really enjoyed. It was uh, definitely had multiple unexpected twists, a return of a character uh, that's really fun. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so let's see. I'll go through my notes and I'll start playing it. Uh, it opens with sky and a mirrored-like skyscraper reflecting the sky. TARDIS sound effects. The TARDIS comes in. And you see they're in Cardiff, if you watch, because uh, that's like the, the Cardiff uh, Performing Arts Center, I think, or the Cardiff Art, Art Museum. And uh, they're talking about Cardiff's Rift, uh, Pit Stop, 20, I don't know what this says, Zoe Scarf, uh, 20, Surface uh, Lift, Rift Open, Running Man, Good, good looking with a backpack, uh, accelerate, uh, derelict, dick, dick, uh, di- something different man back. Then does, uh, does the doctor see him, um, him or not? Uh, big smile. Jack jumps forward, short circuits the TARDIS, 1 billion, 2 billion, 5 billion, 50 trillion, 100 trillion years into the future, into the universe. Oh, the Jack is yelling doctor the whole time. That's what this is. It doesn't say derelictic. I think it says doctor, doctor. Then again, he's, Jack is a character from the doctor dances, maybe? I think he was in a two-parter at the end of uh, season two. I don't know. It's been a while. But uh, I thought he was in the Doctor Dances. And he's a very fun character. I think maybe he was on a spinoff show. I don't know. And, uh, but J- Jack's on the outside of TARDIS, uh, yelling Doctor. Episode opens. I missed two pages of my notebook. I skipped, uh, so I, I put, I didn't, well, I wrote on one side, so I didn't waste the paper, but. Interesting. Wild. Oh, so then there's like a, they like then the episode opens. It's a Russell T Davies. Um. Oh, but before that, we see some like uh, some wild people. At first, I thought they were like playing like kind of LARPing the movies. Uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, Maximilian. That's mad. Uh, Road Warrior. And they're saying humans. Humans. Humans are coming. Uh, then we see Russell T. Davies. Then we meet a human character who's lost. Uh, he just wants to go home. And, yeah, we see kind of goth leather LARPers. And they're LARPing Road Warriors uh, or something like it. But they've LARPed for so long. Obviously, this is trillions of years in the future. So they're like, imagine a world... An entire society built on LARPing, you would lose your way because you say, <laughs> I guess it is not that different, you see, but you, they lost their way. And at some point, the LARPing, you know, it was no longer role play. Like, it was role playing. I don't know. LARPing is a, like a, a way of life. Uh, so that's different, too. Um, where are we? Human. Uh, Road Warriors, Sonar, another human, Chan, are more lost soul, don't give up, coffee, uh, some internal milk, that's, a, that's not a misprint either, Professor Yana, no rush, WFT, 
Isn't it supposed to be WTF? So I don't know what that is. Uh, fine. Her eyes wide. Has to. Uh, has to love for him. Co for him. Pissifer drifts off. Professor drifts off. Pissifer. Pissifer drifts off. Drums in brain. Chan. Professor though. She, so this one character, Chan, Chan Tho, she says Chan at the beginning of sentences and Tho at the end, or statements. Different signal, not standard, square. Something new, they land, what's out there? And then we have uh, not Sun, Time Lord's got this, not even Time Lord's got this far, the doctor says to Martha, I should go, leave, go, doctor unsure. Doctor wants to get out of there, basically. Nope, it's adventure time. Then we see the doctor in the adventure. He puts his duster on. On CMFLL pulp. uh, But we see Jack's out there. I have no idea what his handwriting is. Uh, Jack, hey again, sorry. WW2, court case, court care, through there. Fond of me. Friend of mine. Jack wakes up. so Martha sees this guy. He says, uh, she says, who's this guy? It looks like he's from WW2 with his coat. She's helping. Uh, he's sleeping. So she's trying to wake him up. Jack, the doctor says, he's a friend of mine. Jack wakes up. Captain Jack Harkness, hello. Don't start because Jack's like a, like a smooth operator. Doctor, Captain, good to see you. Regeneration, because he saw a doctor. He saw the Christopher. He was so free, he was from season one, I guess. Christopher Eccleston, uh, doctor. But I thought Rose. Has Martha been the companion for two seasons? I don't know. So that's confusing to me too. But I guess. Uh, I mean, everything's confusing to me. I thought. I don't know. Oh, because maybe. Okay, so he wasn't there when Rose transcended, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Good to see you. Regeneration. How long do you know? Martha's face. Okay, so this is important dialogue, so we'll roll it now. Rolling the tape here. Right now it's at, at the end of the episode, but uh, subtitles are on. It's starting. Martha's face on the thing. Right now, the tar- oh, even the TARDIS was because it was reflecting the sun. Cardiff, uh, built on a rift in time and space, like uh, California, energy. We can soak up some of that energy, that sweet, sweet energy. Use it as fuel. Pit stop, she says. Yeah, 20 seconds. Rift's been active, though. And then we see this guy running. He's running full bore. Uh, reminds me of my favorite part of that one Mission Impossible movie where everybody in the theater was cheering as... Uh, Mar- what was his name? Marty McFly? No. Ethan was running. One of my favorite movie memories in the last 10 years. When he was running in that one movie, the whole theater was cheering and laughing with joy. I talked about it on a podcast before. Uh, so he's got a backpack. He's running. J- j- doctor's trying to leave. I still wasn't confu- confused if the doctor was uh, playing games or not. And then... Uh, yeah, so they go the short circuit, big hops, uh, Rose, accept math, good on Rose, Jack, V Doctor, over 100 years, uh, back in time rift, uh, Doctor, talking Doctor using humans, you're too busy blogging, city versus uh, collaboration long ago, Time long gone, time all gone, night, no stars. It must be a shell. So all the stars are gone. Right now, LARPers are waking up on the live stream here. Uh, we have to hop life. We'll find a way. Dude on the run versus LARPers. Jack forwards. Keep going, ship. Nope, to the silo. So uh, let's see. Utopia, Russell T. Davies. Run, run, music, spotlight. Check check your teeth to make sure they're brushed. Silo 15, human in. Stop, please. They can't let the LARPers in because the LARPers have lost. Uh, they, they only want to play. They, don't, they can't focus on anything else. Humans, let's have a feast together. Kind, see you hungry. 
Professor, we got a doctor here. What kind of doctor? Doctor of everything. Watching the LARPers, they're chanting. Uh, a Scottish uh, chant, though. Professor runs his doctor, asks for his box, uh, his TARDIS. Moving on the surface, this is the doctor and chant, though. Hopefully the person gets here. But uh, we can't spare any guards right now. Looks like the doctor's got a water heater and a comfy chair. He must live in his office. Uh, here's to Utopia. I'll have my internal milk, uh, Chanto says. Coffee's not good, he, he complains. Uh, Creek, uh, we meet a character named Creek. Uh, he's going to help the guy find his family. Big blue box, tall wooden. See, see somebody. I can know old angle to word this way up. Uh, Shafe Canes, anyone? Looking for the Shafe Cane family. Lots of people, humans. Some uh, baso soap. I don't know what that is either. Chan, no problem. Oh, they're calling. Hey, when's the rocket going to be ready? We've only been waiting 40 years. We're working on harmonizing it. Uh, there's even a plant inside a dome in the background. Doctors hearing the drums. Uh, there's lots of tubes, uh, doctors spacing out totally. And Chan says, yo, what's up, doc? Uh, you all right? And he says, uh, sorry, 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 it just slipped my mind. Surface scanner, professor, detecting a different sig signal. This is a square one. Indomitable, they say about humans. That's good. Patra, not all bad. Nears, Jack works to room. Half a uh, deadlock, uh, that's a rocket. Not a rocket, science, but it's hot. So what's out there? Doctor says, I don't know. So they're tri 100 trillion years in the future. That's rare. Not even time lords have come. This is in the playthrough. We should leave. Doctor says we should go. Really, we should go. He's talking to himself just as much as Martha. They both have a pause for a beat, and he smiles. He said, they both smile. They say, no, 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 we're adventurers. I mean, they don't say that. They're in what looks like a quarry, and they come out. Jack, it's on. They see Jack, his backpack. I don't know if we see Jack's backpack again. Go get a, let me go get my kit, Martha says. The doctor recognizes him. Oh, hello again. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if there's a jealousy with the doctor. But, I mean, some of the truth about the doctor's uh, imperfections come out, you know. He was on the outside of the TARDIS through, through the vortex. That's very him. You know him? Yeah, a friend of mine. Back in the old days, we used to travel together. And Martha says he's in a deep sleep. Uh, and then he wakes up uh, and hugs Martha says, hello, Captain Jack Harkness. And doctor says, stop. Uh, she says, Martha Jones. Uh, he says, oh, I was only saying hello. Martha says, I don't mind. You know, you're not saying hello to me like that. So, and Jack, he's like, he has a strained look when he looks at the doctor first. Good to see you and you. Same of you. Have you had work done? <laughs> What about you, doctor? Doc says, oh, yeah, regenerated. How'd you know it was me? Police box, TARDIS, uh, been following you because you left me behind, uh, by the way. Doctor's like, I'm busy. I had to move on. Martha watches this. Uh, Jack says, what happened at Canary Wharf uh, with Rose? Uh, Rose is good. Now, more things for Martha. Her and Mickey and her mom in a parallel world, safe and sound. Jack's happy. Big smile, big hug. Martha, good old Rose. Then we have the LARPers and the one human. They're playing Chase Me, Road Warrior, but the human doesn't even want to play. Then uh, um, Jack's talking about how the doctor left him behind. Used to be a time agent, have a vortex manipulator. He's not the only one that can time travel. Doctor says, that's not time travel. I've just got a sports, uh, sports car. That's nothing but a hopper. Martha says, oh boy, com competition, huh? And Jack says, I waited him out, uh, but I had to wait. I had to live for 100, over 100 years because my watch short-circuited through the entire 21st century, waiting for the doctor to coincide with me. Looking good, don't you think? 
went in the time rift, based myself there, because I knew you'd come back to refuel until finally I got a signal. And here we are. And she goes, how'd you leave him behind? And the doctor says, I'm busy, very cold. And Martha says, you just get bored of us and disappear, but not if you're blonde. Oh, blonde. And the doctor gets irritable. In the edge of the universe, blah, blah, blah. And you see, I would say, excuse me, that's not a proper way to speak to me, doctor. But he probably, you know, I, that's why I wouldn't be a good companion. I'm not, yeah. Then they see what's the remains of the city of the planet. Is it a city? Could be a conglomeration. But uh, long ago, pathways or roads. Uh, let's see what else we got. Jack works, half deadlock. What does utopia mean? Good, good, good times five, professor, teeth lady. Oh, so there's a LARPer on board. I don't, do not protest though. When Jack hits on chant though, chant, I do not protest though. No, something, no stable feeling helping harmonize. Any ideas? Not active. Doctor, doctor, oh, and Roger, hello. What spice are you? Time Lord, last of them. What species, I guess. Uh, humbling. Chant, though. Last of her, her, her species, too. Sorry. Doctor impresses. Future kind. Myth itself. Unless we need utopia, every human knows hermits. Uh, that's a double thing, so I got to remember that. Utopia finger. Call across the universe. Uh, come to utopia. Wildlands. Now everybody's running from the LARPers uh, on the screen. Dark matter regions uh, we can't know. Is it a haven? Some science foundation beyond the collapse of reality to, you know, last. A doctor is impressed. Oh, yes. Professor gets drum brain. Awkward. You all right? Right now they're surrounded by the LARPers. Quite right. To Chan, quite right too. Chan, worth though. Now they're running from the LARPers. Let's keep going on my notes here. Though. Lots of uh, prop travels in LARPers. Watching, boarding, immediate boarding. Martha and Creek, or Crete. There's just me. Skies made of diamonds, like diamonds in the sky, is one of my favorite uh, Rihanna songs. Uh, you and I, Crete and I. Martha, I prefer to be with Martha and I in the Diamonds in the Sky. We see the LARPer back inside. Uh, golden Instinct is Birch talking and plugging stuff in. I don't know what that is. Staying behind with Chant, though. Blue Box, Doctor, find a way out. Drum Face Professor, the drums talk to the professor. Martha and Chanto talk about uh, relatability of being in love. Uh, one way, lo like being in love with somebody that doesn't love you back. A box, relatable. Reheat, uh, Attilo, send a man inside. Keep levels down in, in there. Keep dials uh, below the red. Red room. Working, but the LARPer breaks stuff with an anvil, quadruple exclamation point. Last, a chant, though, override the vents, jack jumpstart, jade out, uh, no, poof, doctor, hands in pockets, math, mouth to mouth, to jack, got, is someone kissing me? Doctor and jack, uh. Now we're, do we're back with Professor and Chant, though. A scientist, oh my word. Uh, doctor of everything, that's a scientist. Chant, though, I don't know. He's coming. I'm coming. The doctor runs out of his office. Uh, uh, well, um, the, the doctor's trying to explain, or Professor runs out of his office. The doctor's trying to explain what it is. Uh, Beltone, Shafe, Kane, Crete, Beltone, Shafe, Shafe, Kane. Crete's going to help. Uh, the gentlemen find the shaved canes. They're going to look for their doctor's box when they go to get water. And we'll see what we can do. Thank you. And then we have Jack, the doctor, and Martha looking around. Hey, Crete, how old are you? Too old enough to work. Uh, follow me. 
And then we see, yeah, human beings or like human beings uh, getting ready to try to get on this rocket to get to Utopia waiting. And kind of the theme of Doctor Who, we love humans because uh, they're so adaptable. People have on uh, caps and sweaters, uh, layers, good layers, uh, doing the best they can with limited resources. Uh, not a lot of smiling, obviously. Uh, the doctor's impressed. Once again, humans made it. Uh, maybe you could become clouds of gas or downloads, but you always revert to the same basic shape, uh, fundamental human. And we find the shave canes. Into the universe, and here you are, indomitable, indomitable. So that's cute. And, you know, reunions, Padra, uh, the shave canes, not all bad news. Martha takes joy at reconnection and family love. Jack's saying, saying hello to everybody. Martha's impressed. Uh, then they go, they see the rocket. And uh, then they see, how, okay, where they talk about how big the rocket is or how do you think it's powered. Uh, I thought they were going to Utopia. Perfect place, same old dream, 100 trillion years. Uh, but, yeah, it's not regular rocket science. It's some, but then back, fast-forwarding, though, Jack says, somebody kissing me. Then Jack goes into the hot room. Camera goes out. What sort of uh, something is her? Travels in time, Professor Trips, uh, agent, trips out to the drums again. A professor meets up with Doctor. Good, 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 good. It's good, apparently. Good. We see one of the LARPers. Uh, some sort of voice. Jack and the Doctor talk about Jack's life. Uh, Chan welcome, though. Doctor looks at the footprint impeller system that uh, the uh, professor's built. Uh, Chan, Chan, though, though, can't harmonize it. Doctor puts on his glasses. Uh, Jack says hi to Chan, though. Chan, I do not protest, though. Later, Blue. Jack wants to help, too. They're trying to figure out the rocket. In the future, the doctor tells Jack he's a fixed point in time, a fact not meant to happen. Something on you. Three Daleks, uh... There was a big ball, big bell with Professor Rose, heart of the TARDIS. She became a god or could have. Uh, I bring life, uh, so put Jack back to human time, kind of. Doctor, the professor asked Doctor if he can fix stuff. He goes, I've never seen this before. Uh, then Martha finds uh, Jack's doctor detector. Uh, regenerate. They talk about doctor's regeneration. Uh, power out. Uh, let's see. I bring life. Uh, final act of the time war. War is life. Uh, took power out. She's stuck in that parallel world. Sorry. I want Bard. One of time. Uh, Jack, you want to go to the big farm? I don't know. And then smiles. Fantastic smiles. Uh, kind of cheeky. This new version of you. Oh, this is what he says. What species are you? Time Lord, last of them. Heard of them? No one's heard of them anymore. Legend's gone. Blimey, Doctor says, that's humbling. Chanto says, yeah, I'm the last of my species, though. And uh, time travel back in the old days, I never believed in it, the professor says later. City outside, that was yours, because that was her conglomeration, her planet. Uh, but soon we learn that the professor, Martha learns the professor also has a watch, like the doctors from earlier this season, the chameleon watch. Can I have a look at it? So Martha's not comfortable with this regeneration. That's the first she's learned of it. She shakes the doctor's hand, still full of surprises. And Chanto says, you're most unusual. Jack asks about the people outside, the LARPers. He goes, yeah, they're stuck in some sort of LARPing loop. Uh, but we could become them. You know, we could, if, we, if we meet up with them, they make us join it. We'll lose our way LARPing forever. Uh, and we see Watch flip over, reveal, takes Martha's breath away. She backs out of the room. Jack gets the things fixed. Uh, oh, this is a funny line here. Um, okay, Utopia, what's that? Every human knows in Utopia where you've been. 
I just said, I'm a bit of a hermit. He goes, you got friends with you, though. Hermits United. Uh, it's a club. We meet up every 10 years, swap stories. It's fun. Uh, it's for a human. So, Utopia. And the professor shows him kind of signals, uh, science foundation stuff, uh, gravitational field navigation. Come to Utopia. It's a point out there in the uh, condensant wilderness. Uh, Wildlands beyond the dark matter reefs, calling us in. Last, the humans scattered across the night. What do you think is out there? No idea. Maybe some sort of haven, hopefully. Science Foundation created the Utopia Project. You kind of covered that. Uh, preserve things even after the end of the universe. Um. Oh, so meanwhile, in the future, the rocket's going to get ready to launch. Two minutes, 199, 98. Both smash, push, gravity pulse. Uh, Martha tries to tell the doctor about the watch, uh, the connection, chameleon thing, remote something. So you can fly without the stars to guide you. Professor gets drum brain, serious drum brain. No one, he's like, I'm sorry, I drifted off. There's work to do. Maybe the, maybe the professor's another time lord is with a theory because he has to watch. Uh, professor goes, I got to get this right, get things going. But the but doctor says, this isn't going to fly, huh? It's not working. So you're promising these people something. And he goes, we'll find a way. Doctor says, no, you're stuck. Uh, and you haven't told them they're stuck. Uh, it's a lot out there. They still think they're going to fly. Professor sits down. Well, better to live in hope. Uh, doctor says, quite right, I said. And I must say, Professor Yana, Professor Yana, this is science uh, well beyond me. But uh, a boost and reversal circuit must reverse, uh, must be a circuit that reverses the boost in any timeline. So I wonder what would happen if I reversed it. And all of a sudden things start going good. Uh, so they have another step towards the solution. How'd you do that? Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you uh, while you've been while we've been chatting. I'm brilliant. Uh, so things are looking good with the rocket. So it's time to board. Passengers start boarding. In the future, the doctor does not buy this watch thing. Uh, it gets made. Deception. Gilder thing. Professor fingers his watch. Uh, lots of voices. All old radio show voices. Take a sun, neat, ten, nine, face a bow. Well, right now there's like a montage of everybody getting ready. Last truck's coming in. Face a bow, rocket, watch open, magic, doctor's eyes. You are, face a bow says you're not alone. Just like Bowie sings in one of the songs, you're not alone. Yana, you are not alone. Yana, doctor, Yana. And the rocket goes up, professor turns, a slow turn, big music, doctor calls ship, uh, good luck. The, the, so the ship makes it out to the atmosphere or something. There's more running, professor locks them in with the LARPers, uh, lets the LARPers in, lowers the defenses, LARPers rush in. I must stop you, yes, on the run from LARPers. The doctor's very mad about the watch. Uh, Sorry, Chan and though. Oh, no, the professor's also mad about his watch and Chan, though. Not my name. Professor was an invention. I forgot. Who am I? I am the boss. Martha said just goodbye to Crete. Go get on the ship. Uh, her and Chan are making quick friends. We see the LARPer who's going to break stuff. Uh, LARPer's in. This way, Professor grabs Doctor's hand. That's not right. Get the door open. Professor grabs a disc. Uh, makers form a utopia. And then they look at the ship. He goes, you made this. There's gluten in this uh, computer. You're a genius, Yana. And he says, well, you are too. He goes, it's easy for me, but you're stellar. Magnificent. I don't normally say that either. And uh, so they're working, plugging stuff in. And the professor says, you know, there's no such thing as a school, so it's just a title, really. There hasn't been a school in a thousand years. Go from one refuge ship to another, sending people to Utopia. He goes, if you were born, doctor says, if you were born in a different time, you'd be appreciated. And he goes, well, this is the time we have. Uh, 
Some admiration would have been nice, Yana says, but uh, the doctor says, we got it now. I love that engine, man. Brilliant. Uh, he goes, but you can't activate it. You got to stay behind, huh? And the professor says, yeah, with Chant, though, she's my friend. Uh, you could give her behind. Uh, I'm a little too little old for Utopia. And uh, tell the doctor we found his box. That gives the, 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 the doctor one more idea. There's even other jars. A lot of good uh, stuff on the set uh, to just give you a lot to look at. Even model rockets. Another drum face from the professor. He's got gray eyes, I think. So TARDIS awakens more drums in him. But the doctor's going to use extra power from the TARDIS to help boost the ship up. Luckily, they have, he's got the right dongles. Now we have Martha and Chanto. Professor's got drum brain. I'm fine. Just get to work, he says. Uh, right, let's get some of these circuits plugged in. Jack says, let's go. Let's go. Come on. And the uh, doctor just thinks he's tired. So he says, it's just a headache. Uh, noise in my head, doctor. Drum noise. Drum noise? You'd say, what the heck? Uh, did you go to too many concerts? Uh, and he goes, I don't know. All, whole, all my life, I've had drums in my brain every hour. No rest for the wicked, eh? And doctor, I don't know, he thinks that's funny for some reason. Uh, 17 years they've been working together, a long time. I adore him, Chan says, the professor. Martha's right, and he doesn't, uh, don't think he even notices. Uh, tell me about it. Happy to serve. Uh, do you mind if I ask why you start every sentence with Chan and end it with O? Oh? Yeah, it's just our way we speak. Uh, could you not do it? What would happen? Be breaking a rule. It would be rude. Oh, rude, not breaking a rule. Martha says, just do it anyway. Like swearing? So it's a little levity. Chan and Lead, though. Just do it once. Uh, can't, though. Do it for me, Martha says. Uh, she says, no, and then they giggle and laugh. Uh, so, nice little moment. So systems are down. We see Yana. Y-A-N-A, -A, come in. That's his camera. All right, we're ready. We just got to connect the couplings uh, in the uh, red room. But everything's coming in and out. And uh, press the reboot key every time the picture goes down. Okay, just keep rebooting. Martha says, fine, as long as I don't have to do short shorthand. Okay, they say go inside and work on the tube stuff. Uh, and let's get it moving, eh? And they say, check, check, one, two. So they get to work there. Attilo, he's inside. Keep the dials down uh, underneath the rocket. That's when everything gets short-circuited by anvil. And the alarm goes off. Uh, first, she tries to, like, break the stuff to LARPer, but I love how it's an anvil. At least I think it is. Uh, say, holy cartoons, uh, lost control. That guy evaporates, uh, override the vents. Uh, he's still working on it, though. Another human, heroic human, trying to save everybody else. Uh, Jate. Uh, meanwhile, that LARPer gets asked to leave uh, premises. Jack tries to do something else. Uh, so we see again his ability to rest and recover. He's very good at rest and recovery. Um, and we're going to need him because the doctor makes that connection. He says, Jack's so good at rest and recovery. Like he can do more than most people. Uh, this is when Martha gives him a little kissy poo. And Jack says, hello, did somebody just kiss me? And Martha goes, no, I kissed your forehead to try to wake you up. Uh, and first the, the doctor loses hope because of the red room and everything. That's flooded. So they say somebody's got to go in there that can uh, rest and recover. And uh doctor says, don't worry. I got the right person for the situation. And uh, he's right here. Jack Harkness. Uh, got the man. Jack, you know, then they run doctor and Jack. Uh, and the full arm running. Okay, let's get this thing moving. Jack takes his jacket and his shirt off, uh, but he has an undershirt. Dodger says, why are you doing that? He goes, uh, like to be comfortable and look good. Uh, 
and he's got what are those things called suspenders. How long have you known that I, and the doctor says, ever since I ran away from you, Rose gave you a fixed point in time and space. Oh, they explain it slowly while Jack's working. So Jack starts working, doctor's watching from the outside, buttons are getting punched, lost a picture. Another flare up, doctor, can you read me? I wonder where Martha gets her clothes, uh, like in different places in time and space or just our time? She's very fashionable. The doctor travels through time and space and picks people up. Uh, don't ask me to explain it. That's a TARDIS. Uh, sports car time travel, he says. So the professor walks over the TARDIS, hears the drums again. Inside the box, inside the box, it calls to him. Uh, Earth, 1892 is when Jack realized uh, that... Uh, He's a fixed point in time and space. Uh, I guess he can move through. I don't understand it, but it was like he didn't know it was Rose that did it. Uh, went through everything. Stray javelins. Uh, ooh, doctor says, uh, in the end, I got a message. Uh, wrong message. Jack's wrong about it. But uh, that's why I left you behind. Uh, it's not even looking easy looking at you, doctor says, because uh, you're wrong. You are. Can't help it. Uh, I'm a time lord. It's my instincts. And Doc Jack says, no, you're just judging me. He goes, no, you're fixed at point in time and space. A fact never meant to happen. Uh, even the TARDIS reacted against you, flew all the way to the end. Uh, and uh, Jack says, okay, well, not much I can do about it. Uh, you're using it against me. Shame on you. Doctor laughs. Yeah. Then they talk about Rose. Martha's listening in, though, and the professor. So the professor hears they're talking about the Daleks. Uh, professor's getting more drum brain. They talk about Rose uh, and Jack and the parallel universe. Uh, and no one's meant to have that power. Do professor starts crying. Time Lord uh, couldn't have that power. It'd be trouble. And we see Rose. We see Jack. Uh, Everything she did was so human. She, you know, Martha looks down. She couldn't control it. She brought you back forever. Well, that final act of the time war was life. Now the professor's like talking along because uh, he's spa he's totally going spacey. Flashbacks, flash forwards everywhere. A rose isn't in a parallel world we can never visit. Uh, Martha's like, I gotta com I, how could I compete with that? I can't. Uh, so frustrating. Sorry. Yeah, Jack said, yeah, I visited back in the time, but uh, kept it, you know, kept it to myself. Uh, couldn't interrupt, obviously, with timelines. I understand that much. And uh, then they talk about, well, Jack's going to be stuck in time forever. In time, he was, I thought, I don't know, maybe I have a purpose. I don't know. To see people out here surviving, that's fantastic. Big smile. Doctor has this big smile back, too. Love of humanity. And maybe I could go out there and meet myself or something. What's well, the only man you'll ever be happy with, the doctor says. Uh, new re regeneration's kind of cheeky. And they get everything fixed uh, for this part of the ship. Uh, but the professor's hearing more and more stuff and more and more drums. Martha sees it. What's going on with you? And, uh, and they say time travel back in the old days, uh, I never believed it. And, uh, what would I know? Stupid old man and never could keep time. Always lost. Uh, professor's kind of irritated with himself, I guess. Even this thing never worked. Martha, this watch is me. I'm going to become human. So we see his watch. We see the doctor's watch. Martha figure, starts to figure out something's up. Uh, time running out on me. Just an old relic, this watch. Doesn't do anything. Professor says, uh, how'd you get it? Uh, I don't remember. I was found with it. What do you mean? I don't know. Uh, I was found in the silver or something on the coast. Uh, as a child with just this watch. Uh, no clothes, just a watch. Uh, it's a broken watch. Never opened it? It's stuck. It's not meant to be opened. 
looks too old. And uh, I don't know. Professor says, Martha looks at it, flips it over. It is the same watch as the doctor had. Her breasts taken away. Professor says, uh-oh, something's up. Martha says, nothing's up. Don't worry. Doctor closes his eyes. Listen, everything's going to be great. Uh, I was going to go check with the doctor. But the professor's uh, thing. Okay, the rocket's ready to go. So Martha's running towards uh, Jack and uh, the, uh, the doctor. Uh, saying, get everybody, is everybody on board? Get ready to launch. Two minutes. Uh, and then they start flipping switches and devices and stuff. Uh, 100 seconds left, 99, 98. Uh, they're getting everything ready. Martha says, hey, doctor says, great. It's a gravity pulse engine. Gravity goes down, pushes it up primitive, but it'll work. Uh, Martha says, he's got a watch, a fob watch, a professor. Same as yours, same writing, everything. Doctor's like, no. Yeah, he's had it his whole life. Same watch. Uh, Jack's like, what do you mean? What's a why watch? No, it's like a magic device. Uh, rewrites bio biology. Change a time lord into a human. It's the same watch. Can't be. Doctor's breath taken away. He runs. Means he could be a time lord. You might not be the last one. Jack, keep it level. Brilliant, uh, but it depends. Brilliant, yeah. No, there's no more Time Lords, he says. Uh, but what if he was human and not a Time Lord? What did he say? And then Doctor gets really irritated. What did he say? Uh, and she goes, he has a perception filter, so he couldn't see the watch. Can he see it now? The Doctor worries. Uh, and he does. Uh, he starts hearing about the Time Vortex. He's like touching the watch. Chantho doesn't like it. Regeneration. Drums, drums, drums. The never-ending heartbeat. Open me, human. Receive my majesty. They see the doctor's regeneration box or the do doctor detector. Get rid of the doctor. Chan says, Yana, won't you please take some rest, though? The rocket's getting closer to 10, 9, 8, uh, countdown. Meanwhile, I was saying, he got, if they got away from the time, what about the face of Bo? Martha says. His last words were, uh, You are not alone. You are not alone, Yana. The doctor or the professor opens the watch in front of the TARDIS. It's a lot of glowing light and swishing stuff. Uh, he breathes it in. Doctor senses something's wrong. Face of Bo says, You're not alone. Close up. Y A N A. That's way better than YOLO. Yeah, Y A N A. Face of Bo closes their eyes. Rocket launches. Lar LARPers watch the rocket go up. Uh, Chan says, Professor, you all right, man? He says, there's nothing all right about me. He does a slow turn. And uh, he's still got a look in his eyes. I'm not comfortable. You know, look of, uh, they say, Lieutenant, what's up? Uh, did you get out of there? Did you reach, you know, escape velocity? Oh, yeah, we'll see you in Utopia. So the humans got away, so that part's good. Then they go running. Jack grabs his thing. They lock them in, though, the professor does, or locks them out of this office. They're trying to get the door open. One door opens, another opens. One door closes, another opens. So he lets in the LARPers, and he says, those three can join the LARPers. The professor says that about Dr. Uh, Martha and Jack. Chanto does not like it. Doctor starts doing other weird stuff. Uh, and she goes, what are you doing, man? Chanto says, it's a professor. LARPers come in. They're running. They're saying, hey, LARP party. Ain't no party like a LARP party. They get one door unlocked. Uh, and Chanto says, professor, uh, I'm sorry. I have to say, tell you to stop. Uh, and she, she goes, You're, we put a lot of work into this. And... Uh, and the professor says, uh, Chanto, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, frustrated with you. She goes, I'm frustrated. I'm, I was talking about my feelings, professor. So, uh, it's time for me to talk about, use my I statement, not you, for you to use your I statement. Like I'm the one, but the professor's not good with that stuff. So he's, you know, saying, Hey, he gets irritable, uh, wouldn't you, why, you never really wanted to help me. You don't understand me. Like, uh, she goes, I'm sorry, you're not listening. He goes, I'm kind of fed up with you, Chant, though. 
Uh, I mean, really, he's just kind of a J to the E to the R to the K. He goes, by the way, my name's not the professor. It's the boss. Uh, professor was an invention, but not like Bruce Springsteen, the boss. Because Bruce Springsteen would not appreciate my that poor behavior, I think, was a professor. But yeah, so he says, I'm the boss. Uh, and then we see the LARPers chasing down our people. A lot of running. Professor's uh, laughing. He gets out a disc because he's going to uh, takes the doctor's regeneration doctor detector. They're still trying to get into the office now, doctor, professor, and uh, Jack, uh, but it's locked. Hey, professor, don't do anything wild. Professor uh, takes the guidance disc, I think, to uh, Utopia. Yeah. So we know where he's going. LARPers, so this is a lot of big, big, big buildup. Doctor, you better think of something. Chanto says one more time, you know what, Professor? This is unacceptable, your behavior. He's trying to get on the TARDIS. She unties his shoes, uh, which in this cosmic, but the, his shoes are made from cosmic strings or something. But he still manages to crawl his way onto the TARDIS, locks the doctor out with the deadbolt, then turns on the electronic deadbolt so the doctor cannot get the door open, which I thought they had maybe because he has the hand. No, he doesn't have it. Uh, maybe he does just in his pocket or something that we don't see. But the professor starts firing up the TARDIS, uh, and the doctor's like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, uh, Jack's trying to hold the door shut on the LARPers. Uh, the doctor says, there's only two of us. If you're a time lord and I'm a time lord, let me in. Oh, he does have the doctor. So the doctor gets mad. He goes, I can't believe Chanto uh, untied my co you know, cosmic string shoes. But still, if the doctor can be young and strong, I can use the TARDIS technology for me. And so he does. Uh, he goes, the boss will rise again to become the young boss, reborn. And then he just does his thing, and he gets all cosmic with cosmic string and starts to transform into a youthful... This is a big thing about... Uh, this is like going against things. Doctor's watching it happen, like the glowing from the outside. Professor becomes the young boss. LARPers are running. Professor wakes up young and happy. He thinks he's very funny and witty, fires up the TARDIS. Uh, doctor tries to short it out. Uh, TARDIS goes out. Big, big music. Uh, doctor's face cliffhanger. Let's just see one or two things with this guy. He's laughing. He's running around. Very youthful and, and sprite-like. Uh, he goes, now then, Doctor. Uh, Oh, I got a new voice. Hello, hello, hello. I got a cool voice. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we have a nice little chat? Uh, well, I tell you all my plans, so you can work out a way to stop me. Uh, and Martha goes, "I know that voice. That's the boss." Uh, and the doctor says, "Just stop. Just think about it." Uh, and he goes, "Use my name." He goes, "The boss." Uh, Who's the boss? Uh, and he goes, "Bye, bye." Then he's, you know, revving up the TARDIS with all the, you know, revving and stuff. Uh, the doctor tries to short circuit it, which only works for a second because the professor or the boss says, no, no, you don't. Uh, he gets it pumping and he goes, enjoy the end of the universe. Bye bye. Martha says, come on, doctor, stop him. And uh, the LARPers are trying to get in the room, but then they agree. After the TARDIS, they say, let's take, let's take a break. We'll all take a nap and reconvene because even LARPers have to rest, correct? And so they all lie down and they take a break and they agree to get together again in about in a week or two weeks uh, to uh, work it all out and then go find the professor in Utopia. So that's the uh, end of the episode. Thanks, everybody, and good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that has subscribed to our newsletter to help the Midnight Mission and people experiencing homelessness. I really, really appreciate it because the thing is that uh, positive change starts with you just taking small actions. 
And those small actions do add up. They empower you to take those, like it, but it's you're only empowered right when you take action. So I'm so proud of the listeners. I mean, I can't tell you how much this really means to me, uh, and how much I appreciate it. Uh, uh, because I, I want to be, be empower you to be a part of positive change. I know it's changed my life, and it's not something big. It's something small, and ideally a small daily practice. And I know it's not easy uh, because uh, it's not easy. We've got 150 uh, newsletter subscribers out of about 250,000 regular listeners of the podcast. And there's uh, you know 6,000 or 5,000 patrons and a few, um, probably maybe like twice that in different listener groups. So I really, really do appreciate those of you that signed up. Uh, Carrie, Susan, and DJ, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Alex Herschel and Chris, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Todd, Elaine, and Ange, thanks, thanks, and good night. Marianne, Elizabeth, and Tyler, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Eleanor, Maggie, and Hannah, thanks, 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 and good night. Ariane, Shane, and Steph, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Keith and Nigel and Joe, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Cami, Hannah. Or Hannah, I don't know. We got one of each. Eddie and Deborah, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Susan, Diane, and Amanda, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Nora, Judy, and Lori, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Yana, Deb, and Trisha, thanks, thanks, and good night. Lori, Eve, and Susan, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Rosie, Joni, and Michelle, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Stephanie, Mike, and Jeannie, thanks, thanks, and night. And Cynthia, Karen, and Cheryl, thank you so much for being a part of Positive Change. Sleep With Me only exists uh, as a free podcast or even a thing in the world because of people that actively participate in the show, either by you know being a part of Positive Change or uh, supporting our sponsors or supporting the show, and I really, really do appreciate it. Like, I lo- could not do it without all of you, uh, so thank you so much. And here's a couple uh, messages from our Talk You In sponsors. That's how we've been able to grow. There's the people that support those sponsors are how we've grown the show to over 450 free episodes in the archives. Uh, thanks, everybody.